One of Mary Gates' greatest strengths, I think, and one of her strongest attributes was to uh, not only use her leadership well, but also uh, bring others along uh, as potential leaders. I was very excited to be here as a student from the Tulalip tribes. Um, I was very afraid at first because uh, I was the first person in my family to go to school, uh, to higher education. After I was elected on the ASU Dub Board of Control, one of the adventures was meeting with the Board of Regents. I remember my first meeting, one of the very first persons that I met was uh, Mary Gates. It was so beautiful to, to meet a woman who, uh, who saved you a seat by her and thought you were special enough to have a strong voice. Sometimes leadership is what you have passed on to another generation. She, uh, she was good not only at providing personal leadership, but uh, giving leadership opportunity to others and helping uh, bring them to a point where they could provide uh, you know, strong leadership on their own. It was exciting for her to say, um, wh what do you have to say, Deborah? And, uh, me? <laughs> um, and, and being a student, you know, wow, you have a platform to, to share some of those messages that are important to you and your community. So she opened the door for that type of dialogue. The students were always her main interest. That was what filled her up from doing, doing the work of, as a regent was the opportunity to interact and engage with the students and that, that's what meant so much to her. One thing that I really appreciate and I learned a lot from my mom as I, as I was growing up and I watched her as she got more involved and engaged on different boards and in different activities was the amount of work she did. Um, she was totally committed to everything that she was doing. She was definitely a team builder looking for consensus, um, but she had a way of getting things done. Our world needs engaged, knowledgeable, compassionate leadership. There are lots of ways of creating change. I think the most long-lasting are when you change a culture, and that's exactly what I think that these endowments have done, is they've changed the whole culture of how undergraduates think about themselves, how faculty thinks about undergraduates and about the fact that they have limitless opportunities. They really are boundless in terms of what they can do. So it takes that initial courage of saying, hey, there's a problem here and we have to address it. And I think UW has always kind of taught and it always talks about how we have to uh, be that change. If we see the problem, we can't just idly sit by and allow it to continue. My junior year, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. I came back to school and I realized pretty quickly that there was uh, no support framework for type 1 diabetic students. There were no resources that I could easily access. My project has been about creating a UW chapter of the College Diabetes Network and also educating the broader Seattle community about type 1 diabetes. My innovation project over the summer was working on a team um, to build a prosthetic foot that would be more um, useful for people who have lower levels of mobility. There was one time where I got to actually see MPG actually try on the foot that they were working on and walk around and do a bunch of trials and I had never seen that before and it was really cool for me to actually be on the inside of that, getting to see what's going on. When I went out to present the research, I actually met someone who had the condition hearing the story and hearing how hopefully my bench work could hopefully translate over to actual helping people. That's just kind of what got me, got me into research and got me started on my path, which I hopefully will want to continue into the future. I never expected to find funding the way that I did through the Mary Gates Endowment to have an entire summer full, fully paid for to completely give myself over uh, to research was a phenomenal experience that I absolutely didn't 
didn't even realize would be an option. Being able to, to get the validation that your work is important outside of your lab and outside of your life is just wonderful because I think almost everybody's excited about their work. But knowing that other people have read about it and said to themselves, oh, that does sound important, it's just really good to hear. The Mary Gates scholarships and the concept that they represent of undergraduate research, how that has really broadened and strengthened uh, the whole university. It has made our research stronger and it has made those undergraduates that much uh, better, smarter, wiser, and better able to provide their own source of leadership as time goes on. The work that I do is actually very similar to what I did as a Mary Gates scholar as an undergraduate. I think there's no doubt the Mary Gates scholarships have a big impact. Of course, I can speak from a personal level. They had an impact on me and influenced the trajectory of my career and the opportunities that I had to basically make it where I am today. It's worth doing as part of your learning experience because you really don't know where it will lead you. Participating this summer changed my thinking from graduate school is not for me to fully believing that research is something I want to participate in for the rest of my career. And it directly led to my seeking out information about the Learning Sciences and Human Development Master's program, applying for that program, and I've actually accepted their offer. So I will be starting in the fall. I just really wanted to do something that was meaningful to me. And in my mind, it just seemed that the only way to do that was to be a researcher and to do science for a living, because I feel like science is going to save the world, and it changes the world, and it's really crucial for, for all of us. So I just wanted to be a part of that.